Why do the cutscenes in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity look better and more vibrant than the ones in Breath of the Wild and the reveal trailer of the sequel? That might be because the game has been glowed up from top to bottom, from more vibrant art to overall better implementation of saturation and contrast levels than the two Zelda games, but also the resolution. So that begs the question, despite being open air and not a battle map based game, could Breath of the Wild 2 run in 1080p on the regular Nintendo Switch and even upscale 4K in 30 frames per second, or at least full HD 1080p 60 frames per second on a new Nintendo Switch model? That is what we'll be exploring today, but first be sure to leave a like, aim 3500 and subscribe as we are pushing for 275,000 subscribers. Oh and press the notification bell and again for all notifications as otherwise you will most likely not be notified when we upload new Zelda videos. Anyway, let's get inside a possible upscaled 4K or at least 1080p 60 frames per second Breath of the Wild 2. Breath of the Wild 2 in 4K for the end of Zelda's 25th anniversary. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Well, I don't think we'll see native 4K for Zelda this generation, but with reports about the Nintendo Switch Pro, or at least upgraded base model Nintendo Switch, upscaled 4K could be possible. Since after upgrading the battery life with the version 2 Switch in 2019, a possible version 3 should boost more power. A Nintendo Switch Pro or upgraded base model would obviously be the Switch equivalent of the PlayStation 4 Pro, more so than the new Nintendo 3DS. How? As there are no exclusive of PlayStation 4 Pro games, like what was the case with the new 3DS from 2015. It is just that the same PS4 games play in high resolutions, frame rate, detail, and in some cases, upscaled 4K. And that is the topic of this video, as Breath of the Wild 2 could definitely benefit from a mid-gen performance boost with the strongest Nintendo Switch model. Still, in the case of PlayStation 4 Pro and the new Nintendo 3DS, both were mid-gen upgrades aimed to extend the life of the current generation and improve the visuals and performance of the original model. As we detailed in our new Nintendo Switch Pro video, link in the card, Nintendo after launching the main model, usually two years after the launch, bring a cheaper model. In the case of the 3DS, it was the 2DS with our 3D and foldable system, and for the Nintendo Switch, it was the Switchless and dockless Nintendo Switch Lite. So following this logic of specifically the 3DS, two years after the lesser version, we should again get an ultimate model, the Nintendo Switch equivalent of the new Nintendo 3DS. That one came out in the West in the beginning of 2015, so four years after the launch of the 3DS in 2011, and if the Nintendo Switch Pro and new Nintendo Switch comes out in 2021, then that would also be four years after the Nintendo Switch in 2017. The same naturally goes with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which launched the same day as the Nintendo Switch, and curiously enough, Link's Awakening HD launched the same day as the Nintendo Switch Lite in 2019, which means that Breath of the Wild 2 and Nintendo Switch Pro on the same day confirmed. Maybe, not exactly, but the possibility is definitely there, as this pattern of Zelda and new Switch model appears to be a little too specific to be a coincidence. Especially since Nintendo has, according to Bloomberg sources, been telling their third-party partners to prepare their titles to be 4K ready. And with Nvidia's brand new DLSS 2.0 AI upscale technology potentially making making its way into a new Nintendo Switch model, it isn't out of the realm of possibility that the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild could be its ultimate upscaled 4K or 1440p title. The first Zelda title in 4K. Well, that, or at least the first Zelda game in 1080p 60 frames per second, which might be preferable for the many high-paced action sequences found in the game. So what is the problem? The fact that Breath of the Wild ran in 900p and 30 frames per second when docked on the Nintendo Switch. A far cry from 4K. And not only that, there were other technical problems as well. The most apparent being that 30 frames was the peak frame rate while playing the game, which meant that the game could easily go deep below this target in certain situations. And most of all, locations. Do I need to say more than explosions and Korok Forest? Yes. This game clearly doesn't like densely packed and highly detailed areas, which caused the frame rate in 900p on the Nintendo Switch and 720p on the Wii U to drop from the acceptable 30 frames per second to an unacceptable good under 25 frames per second. A clearly visible slowdown, and though it brings back fond memories from playing Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64, it clearly ruins your immersion while exploring the first new Zelda game in HD. 
Sadly, the technical hiccups of Breath of the Wild on the Nintendo Switch didn't end in Korok Forest after pulling the Master Sword or concluding the Trial of the Sword. The frame rate was also an issue in other densely filled locations, which makes me wonder if a vibrant castle town could even run in 30 frames per second if it wasn't turned into a location taken straight out of Fallout 3. Even so, Breath of the Wild was, and is to some extent still plagued by other technical issues. And sadly, just like in the most visible frame rate drop case, most of these are directly tied to the aging hardware of the Nintendo Switch, and an example of limitations that are about to be removed once and for all on next-gen systems. The most obvious of these probably being the frequent pop-in and pop-out of enemies, obstacles, and most of all, animals. How many times have we been out hunting just for the animal to get into a dead end? You think you got it, but nope, it suddenly pops out of existence. Nothing, and I repeat, nothing ruins player immersion like pop in and pop out. And in a regular game, I would be willing to forgive it. But in Breath of the Wild, the definition of an open air and organic gaming experience, these interferences are a proper annoyance. Then there is the matter of freezing, which has occurred to me on numerous occasions while playing Breath of the Wild. And yes, all of these technical hiccups may be tied to the insane programming that went into Breath of the Wild, and especially that they also had to launch it both on the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch. And it, this brought it to its absolute limit. And we thus hope that these shortcomings can be addressed even on the base model Nintendo Switch, or heck, Nintendo Switch Lite, which on paper are supposed to be significantly stronger systems than the 8 plus year old Wii U. And this brings us to another issue. Draw distance. The draw distance and detail we can see is entirely dependent on its hardware and finding a golden middle ground that can deliver a satisfying resolution and frame rate. On the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch, draw distance has sadly been an issue. There might be an explanation as to why Breath of the Wild's cutscenes look washed out compared to what we see in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. In fact, Inadequate contrast and saturation levels is something that we constantly need to work with in our videos, as the footage we capture of Breath of the Wild from our Nintendo Switches are less vibrant than they can be. And it doesn't have to be this way. Since Age of Calamity has perfect color vibrancy, and more often than not, we don't have to do anything with the footage provided by Koei Tecmo and Nintendo. Yes, we know that one is an open air game with one of the biggest maps in non-car based open worlds and the other is a battle map based experience. Though at the same time, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity shows that it is possible to grant the Breath of the Wild trilogy the right contrast levels, saturation and color vibrancy. It is just that the Zelda team hasn't used it, which seems odd as all of the Zelda games had more or less perfect vibrancy and close to no other Switch games had this issue. Unless it is to mask unsatisfying draw distance in the open air. Though Breath of the Wild is a gameplay masterpiece minus some recycled dungeon and boss designs, its visual tone and hardware shortcomings are not aging well. Nintendo knows this as they address the overly long loading times as late as early 2019, two years after the game released for a temporary overclock that only triggers when loading. In other words, it is possible to address some of the mentioned immersion issues with updates on the Nintendo Switch alone, now that the Wii is completely dead and elevate the technical experience to a whole new level with a more powerful Nintendo Switch model, since draw distance issues are an overall problem on the Nintendo Switch, which most likely can only be properly solved by a more powerful Nintendo Switch. And that brings us to the key point. We need a new Nintendo Switch model or Nintendo Switch Pro for the sake of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. The Zelda team and Nintendo know this, and most likely they are hard at work to reach the standards seen in Age of Calamity and further beyond on its most powerful model. Breath of the Wild and thus the current Nintendo Switch model's technical shortcomings are another opportunity for Breath of the Wild 2 to outshine the original, to some extent on the base model, and a reason for a system upgrade on a more powerful Switch model. In other words, delivering a peak Zelda technical experience, although the Nintendo Switch is succeeded by a next-gen Nintendo system around 2024. If it is possible to play the game on a new Nintendo Switch model in upscale 4K 30 frames per second, then it should be considered as a first taste of next-gen Zelda, though at the same time, maybe not implemented, as far more important technical issues need to be addressed and wiped out than resolution. Most of all, a stable frame rate that holds or possibly even exceeds 30 frames per second, removing pop-in and pop-out, freezes, and other rendering issues, and on top of that, improving the limited draw distance. These are the technical issues that need to be addressed, and when they are sorted, then we can talk about upscaled 4K 30 frames per second when the console is docked. Though personally, I would prefer a full HD, 1080p, stable 60 frames per second experience docked and possibly even undocked on a new Nintendo Switch model, improving both the resolution and frame rate. 
this is what it comes down to. A seamless and immersive experience that is consistent no matter the location or scenario in the game. As the cost of playing Breath of the Wild in upscale 4K could be too high, especially if it will bring over some of the most visible technical issues found on the current base model Nintendo Switch model when playing Breath of the Wild. So, concluding. Even if a new Nintendo Switch model is capable of running Breath of the Wild's sequel in upscale 4K, then it is better to wait with 4K Zelda until the successor of the Nintendo Switch and the next big open-air Zelda adventure after the Breath of the Wild trilogy is concluded. And that is it, a consistent experience in 1080p and possibly 60 frames per sec with Age of Calamity color vibrancy throughout the trilogy on Nintendo Switch's potentially most powerful model. That will be the true technical legacy of the Breath of the Wild chapter in the Zelda series before the 4K chapter begins after 2025. If you haven't already, please be sure to like this video to make it more visible, subscribe if you haven't already to push us past 275,000 subscribers on the way to 300,000, and press the notification bell and again for all notifications to not miss any of our upcoming uploads. Many of you watching are not subscribed and that doesn't help with making high quality productions. Finally, a big thanks to all our gracious patreon.com slash common patrons, and in particular our royal producer Charles Shash. You rock. But for now, be sure to check out one or both of these two awesome videos. We'll see you in the next one.